appreciate you guys being here. What I'm going to get started with today is going through the um, some of the flowers from my Fabric Flowers book and show you different samples we've made that are um, through from sweaters, from denim jeans, from men's ties, um, even talk a little bit about some needle felting we did, give you an idea for a bridal bouquet. So it's going to be a lot of really interesting ideas for you to incorporate in so many different ways. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Diane. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm looking. I have um, Michelle helping me here again today, and we set up a nice webcam. Um, so hopefully we'll have good, consistent connectivity, and you'll be able to see the colorful detail in some of these flowers and some of these projects. So somebody, I see some people from Northern Virginia, from Madison, Wisconsin. I love Madison. There's Pat from Houston, Texas. Thanks to you all for being here. So I think I'll go ahead and jump right in and get started. I'll check in with Michelle and what do you think, Michelle? It's a good time to get it rolling? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Looks like we've got a nice crowd watching. So I'm going to start out by sharing what I'm wearing here. Um, if you might have noticed, I have a, a necklace on, and this is a fabric. This is the frilly fabric flower in the book, the which I have right here. So I'm talking about projects that are in the Fabric Flowers book. I'm gonna start there. And this is made from t-shirt material. So when you're looking in your closet and you're thinking about whether it be your t-shirts or somebody in your family's shirts and thinking about sending them to the thrift shop, I would suggest you really look at if they're a unique color of knit, save them because there are so many possibilities for t-shirt. Um, I call it both t-shirt fabric and t-shirt yarn. And this example I'm showing you actually shows more of what I, we did with the yarn. So again, that is a matter of cutting strips of t-shirt material and then stretching it. I think I've shown that before um, in some of my videos, my tutorial videos. And then again, remember I said, keep those colors in mind, the beautiful colors you have in t-shirts. And so you can combine multiple colors of t-shirts. And that would, that's what happened in this, this frilly fabric flower. And this, the tool we used to create this was a template, I believe from Clover. Clover has some really wonderful tools for helping you make fabric flowers. And then we gathered the strips. So you can make it as a choker, you could make it as a longer necklace. And I'm going to show you one more idea. This this shows you like one color used um, in the multiple yarn. Um, this one, let me see, I have to figure out my game plan. This is an example of more of the size that I'm wearing. And you can see this is a little smaller frilly flower. Um, but there you can see what it looks like if you do multiple colors of, of your yarn when you made maybe your, um, your whether it be a cho choker or a longer necklace. Um, and then I have one more sample to show with you. This shows you just the three dimensionality of using that tool. And really what you're doing with that tool is just cutting um, cutting the template and um, then folding it together and then stitching them all of those fun t-shirt colors together into uh, this fun little tool. And um, I'll tell you too, I see that I, now that I can see comments, which is so awesome, I see Michelle is posting links for you. So you will find links that uh, in the comments that take you to the products that I talk about too. Um, some of them being our books and um, PDF opportunities. So this book is available not only as a printed copy that you can order on Amazon, but you can also, if you're really anxious to make some of these flowers, you can go to amyberrickman.com and you can buy the digital PDF 
version of the book. So you can jump in right away. So there's Mary saying hello from Sparta, Wisconsin. And that being said, we have a giveaway and I need to mention the giveaway. So today's giveaway is a digital copy of the Fabric Flowers book. So please comment and Michelle will help me pick a winner when we wrap up at the end today. So stay on and tell me the flowers that you like. Tell me where you're watching from. Um, I'd love to hear from you on various ideas, thoughts you have on these techniques too and what you like, because then I can, I can show more next week of, because we, I'm going to, we're going to be doing several Facebook lives related to flowers. Um, so that's your t-shirt your t-shirt version. And I'm going to show this just so I see how this, it looks like we're getting good color and we're getting clear pictures. So that's awesome. Next up, I want to talk about sweaters and the opportunity for upcycling sweaters into flowers. What I'm going to show you first is um, this, this version that is in the book. And it is the, um, I think we call it the coiled rose in the book. And um, it has, it is actually, these have been made from cashmere fat, cashmere sweaters. And what they both, the reason I pick these to show you today, particularly is you can see, and I'm gonna be practicing here and see how close I can get and give you guys better views of things. This has, several different types of sweaters in the project in the leaves you can see that some of them might have like um cable or ribbing on them to give a little dimension to the sweater this one has maybe a little piece of like printed sweater material um and i noticed on this one the sage color which i just think this is just a beauty of color and it also, you can see that the leaves look like they were taken from a sweater that maybe had a floral print on it. So you can see the pinks. And um, so the cashmere, if you can find the cashmere at the thrift shop or you've got a sweater that has a hole in it or a wrap, remember to hold on to those and upcycle. And it's April, so this is the month for upcycling, right? Earth Day's coming up. Um, so I think it's fun to kind of take, take, set a goal for the month that you're gonna make some things with recycling in your, um, you know, your bag of fabrics that you're gonna work with. Um, I'm gonna show, how's everything looking, Michelle? Everything looks great. Good, we're good, okay. Um, this one too is another example showing the upcycling of a cashmere sweater. I think probably some of these leaves could just be wool. Um, remember, you can combine different different types of sweaters. Don't be afraid to experiment. The stripe here, who would have thought adding that that black and white stripe might just be the perful, perfect punch for the um, and finish to this design. Let's see who's there. Should you felt the sweater before creating the flowers? Great question. Yes, I would suggest felting the sweaters before you make the flowers. That'll help tighten up the edge of the weave of your sweater. Um, but it's not required. Sometimes you'll try felting sweaters and they won't they'll say they're a hundred percent wool. So you're thinking, okay, this is gonna felt up beautifully, and they end up only shrinking a very small amount. So it's really an experimental process when you're felting the sweaters and learning. In fact, I'm going to show you that is a perfect segue to talking about this project. And this is a project that's a part of the book. It's making a, a scarf out of felted sweaters. And um, you can see the flower. It's kind of darker on this right now. Um, it has a green cable leaf and a brown ribbed flower. But this is an example where some of these sweaters felted really nicely and others did not. Um, and we combined 
both uh, cashmere and wool in this um, scarf. So, and you can see, this is kind of cute on the end. You can see the cable going horizontal, but then we took ribbing to do a vertical. Um, so that kind of is a nice finish. And this was created using a serger, which is ideal if you're making something like this type of sweater. But if you're just wanting to make the flower, that all can be made by hand. Um, so keep that in mind. And so that's sweaters. Still thinking about wool and that material. I wanted to show you a couple examples I have of um, needle felted flowers. And these are some of my favorites. And Diane McCauley designed these and made these. She is just um, has done an exquisite job with the needle felting. You can see the pansy and how gorgeous. It literally is like a painting almost. And then the idea of um, felting two layers of wool on top of each other is what's happening here. And this one is needle felted. And, and there's Linsa. Hi, Linsa. Um, this is the uh, little seed bead in the, in the middle that just that little touch of yellow, I think just sets this pansy trio off. And it's the time of year that you, we might be having some pretty, pretty beautiful pansies to look at in your yard or at the garden store. So I always love to take pictures for inspiration. And then you can use that picture and you could try to recreate it. Um, and a little more about needle felting. I thought I'd bring a little sample just to show you. This is another project, um, step by step from a project in the Fabric Flowers book. And this is where you can see how the, the fiber is actually placed onto one of a petal of one of the flowers. And then you use the needle felting tool and you actually punch the fiber into the, the base wool fabric you're using. So, and there's Jessica from Arkansas. Hello, Jessica. Thanks to everybody who's out there watching. I really appreciate having the live live interaction it just makes it more fun for me and hopefully more fun for you because if you comment remember you have a chance to win something we try to do that most weeks it's not every week but um so keep that in mind so back to needle felting i am going to show you my most favorite project in the fabric flowers um book and it is this beautiful bouquet so this bouquet was created by taking just the single rows that we have the pattern for and the project in the book and then making multiple roses in different colors of needle felted. Um, oh, it's a white wool that we used and then we felted on both sides to to create that little circular bloom that you see that you see so love the bouquet is stunning so i know you guys are able to see this almost real time with me which is fun and again i know i just think about diy weddings today and how popular they are and all of the creative things you can do with bouquets uh, I love the idea of the fabric flowers for you bouquet and you know it lasts forever so keep that one in mind and I will show you a few pictures now from the book partly because that bouquet is one of my favorite photos in the book um, so the book has not only you know a lot of information in the front about technique but there she is there is the photo of the bouquet with the flower girl and you notice there it is on a here i go trying to make sure figure out my webcam but there you can see the um the lapel for the boutonniere so you could make something like this that could be a boutonniere um, worn across the wedding party. So that is exciting. A couple other pictures from the, this is, oh good. This is the flower I just showed you, that orange process 
of making it. You can see what the needle felting tools look like. There's the tool that we like. We use Clover's needle felting tools. And Paula says, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for watching, everybody. There's Susie from Situate. All right, so I have to take a moment to show you some live flowers that I have. These beautiful, this beautiful bouquet, I'm going to quick show this to you because it, it has some roses like we were just talking about. This came from my friend Susie, who's in Situate, Massachusetts, and it came, it arrived yesterday. Just perfect timing for the Facebook Live because I do love to have fresh flowers in the background. And the color, the colors in this bouquet kind of inspired me today to think, OK, yeah, maybe we'll show some purples and some reds. Um, so anyway, this is my thank you to Susie. Um, and I'm glad she's watching. I told her I would share. She, uh, she'd be able to see the flowers when I did my live. So so that's just having fun, right? Um, denim. Denim was the other fabric I mentioned we were going to talk about. And speaking of roses, we have a, a little denim rose that's super simple. Mary Meyer worked to create this. And you've talk, heard me talk about Mary. She helps on over on our membership group. She does a wonderful job making projects and she helped me over the years with Indigo Junction, patterns and books. So this is one of her um, contributions. And it's so simple. This is like ripping a strip of denim and folding it and then wrapping it like a rose. But what I wanted to show here is the difference between, you can see how the, the edge, that raw edge of the not sure if it's the warp or the weft of the denim, um, how we were able to use that as a contrast and accent. So you get this nice circular effect. And sometimes it'll be cream. Sometimes it'll be more white. Um, I just noticed I had a couple different samples. So try different types of denims, different darknesses of denims. And that being said, you could even find like red denim um, and upcycle and make this red rose. I think maybe we're gonna have to try that for next week, Michelle. How about that? <laughs> okay, so um, you can tell I really love the fabric flowers. I love that you can make them quickly and easily. I love that they're wonderful gifts for people. I love that you can use them for multiple, in multiple ways. You can make a bouquet, um, how about putting them on a hat? So I brought out one of um, the hat projects in the Fabric Flowers books book. This is a spiral. Um, I think maybe Nancy Lawrence helped me with this and she may be watching. Um, and then Kathy just said, I remember wood flowers in bouquets. Isn't that fun? So that would be the perfect Earth Day bouquet if you ended up using some natural earth uh, products. But hey, you know, the, do, using fabric and upcycling this month is a great way to celebrate Earth Day. Um, or if you want to try the wood, we'll have to Google that and look online and see what we can find. But this hat, I love this is more like a cloche. I would say that's a term that I'm sure is in my Mary Brooks Pickin language of fashion dictionary. And that cloche, just with this spiral, is a lot of fun. In the book, we do show this on even a pillow. So think about the fact that you can even add to your home decor with fabric flowers, decorate pillows, decorate, um, you know, if you're pulling, you're tying back a curtain in your living room and you have a gorgeous fabric flower to on the tie back, that's another idea. And there's Susie saying, happy birthday, love the hat too. Thanks, Suze. And I see Kathy from Michigan, love the felted pansies. Thanks, Kathy. You know, there's probably pansies blooming right now in Michigan, too. I'm sure there's there's beautiful flowers around the corner up there. So, oh, purses. Thank you, Kate. Kate was saying, of course, let's 
These flowers are perfect embellishments on purses. In fact, that'll, again, you guys are helping me. That is a perfect segue to talk about the Thai flowers that are in this book because here it is, the tailored Thai flowers, gorgeous. This purse is upcycled ties. And then you can see, there we go. You can see the fun flower that is made from ties. And I love the detail of the leather, you know, the faux leather button that you find on those wool coats at the thrift store. And that's what we use to accent the center. Um, so thanks, Kate, for making me think that we needed to talk about purses. And looking at that flower and thinking about the centers and what you can use for the centers of your flower brings me to our next um, topic, which is let's look at options for the center of your flower. So I'm going to show you this. And this is um, again a tie flower. But what you see right here is a covered button. Um, so whether you go ahead and make a fabric, maybe you make a fabric yo-yo type button for your flower, or you use a traditional button. Uh, but I love the idea that we can cover buttons to be the centers. And I have a few more examples of that. Um, these are other projects from the Vintage Notion. Um, Vintage Notions book. No, we're talking about fabric flowers. Um, there are There is a flower in the Vintage Notions book. There is one magic pattern of a flower. So we'll, I'll finish, I'll show you that next. But this gives you an idea of if you love batiks, I love batiks. Um, this is a combination of batiks and then this, this is a covered button in the center. So it's like a daisy. And I think we combine this with, again, maybe a clover uh, fabric flower making tool. And then I wanted to show you one other version where we added the batik and sometimes batiks have just really gorgeous tone on tone texture. And I think that works really well for the center. And notice something else here we did on this. We used every other, we used a light and dark every other petal color. So I think that's another detail that you can think about. And I put up, we're getting this a little bright, but this version um, is actually an example of a coiled brooch that's in the book and think about using your tiny little scraps. So fabric flowers, this project is perfect for tiny small scraps as are many of the projects in the book. Um, so there you have, and let me show you what those, if you're you know, shopping at your local quilt shop or fabric store, you'll be looking for, this is the packaging Again, it's kind of hard to see it. There you go. This is the Dritz packaging for the um, covered button packages. And you might see there's two different styles you might see on the market. You might also see this, this style of package. Um, there's a transition happening into a new brand look. So you'll see both styles of packaging. But what you're looking for are the metal um, button covers. And they have the best variety you can find for covered buttons that they offer. Uh, and I did notice they also offer bulk packs of those covered button kits. So the bulk may be a great way to, to if you're planning on making a few flowers or making a bouquet, maybe even for a DIY wedding. Um, and Sally's saying Den denim flower would make a cute bracelet. Oh. I think it would be great. And you could use the waistband from say the jeans to make a fabric cuff and then put the denim flower on it. That might be a fun idea. Um, and Dawn loves making flowers. There's Paula. Sweaters always look fancy by just adding a flower. I totally agree. I love just the touch. In fact, the best advice I got was from, um, Flowers add a wink to your wardrobe. So think about that as um, just, it's just a, you know, something to cheer people up if they might see that flower on your, on your lapel or around your a necklace, a brooch, maybe you put it on a hat. 
Um, you know, it's summer, so we might have the, I even have my larger hat back here that, you know, again, just to get you guys thinking about how the flowers can, for instance, this would be a fun little touch right here on the hat. Um, right? Covered button. So maybe you find a hat at the thrift store as well as the fabric to make a gorgeous fabric flower for yourself. I did want to share, remember I, well, I did want to share something fun that I'm wearing. Um, side note, I have a rose, a vintage ring treasure that I have collected that's here. Um, and it's made out of brass. It's kind of dangerous to wear, I'll be honest, but I thought I'd wear it today since we were doing fabric flowers. I want to, and I, then I looked in my um, jewelry box of vintage treasures. And I also found that I had this, um, this ring, I'll switch rings and put it on. Um, so this one is made out of like lucite and it's got pressed flowers inside of it. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, and then one more that's made out of the vintage notion. And I think my Cheryl Pinkman may have made this one for me. Um, and it is made of rickrack. So you can just, I'm gonna to try to show it. And you know what's happening is our sunlight is coming in, which is kind of blowing out a little bit of the light here. But you can see this is just rickrack wrapped. Um, and I forgot to silence my phone. So I'm gonna decline that. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. That was my daughter trying to FaceTime me. So. We just had a slight interruption. We'll be back. Obviously, she wasn't watching my FaceTime live. Um, so let's see. Close ups of rings, please. OK, I will try that for you, Deborah. Let's see it. Um, let's see. Here I go. And I'm going to, you know, I'm there you go. This is the brass ring with the rose on it. This is the fun lucite ring with like pressed flowers in it. Okay. Maybe if I hold it still, it'll, okay, cool. And then here is the, this is again, how's that looking, Michelle? Can you see if it's- You might take some photos and post them. Great idea. I'll take some photos and post them after the live. I may not get it to it till, sometimes I don't, uh, get those posted maybe until early next week. So just stay tuned um, to my Facebook page and I will share some pictures by early next week of the various rings that I shared from my collection. Um, I'd be happy to do that. Great idea, Michelle, thank you. Um, so I making sure I've covered, well, I wanted to talk about when I brought up the hat, it reminded me that hats and flowers, and if you can see this cover of this um, Vintage Notions Monthly, so this is one of my monthly issues, and these are based on my wanting to share more of the Women's Institute material and the wisdom of Mary Brooks Pickens. So after I wrote the Vintage Notions book, I went back in and continued to curate some of the, my favorite content from the school, this correspondence school, and how these issues are available either on amyberrickman.com as PDF downloads or on Amazon as printed, printed copies. And I, once I noticed this cover of the hats with the flowers, I remembered there was a great article called Artful ribbon. I know you can see the ladies there. You might, might be able to read, but you can see the the um, photograph of the models wearing various flowers on their hats. So I think it's always inspiring to look back at vintage fashion to inform your modern creativity and your modern making. And so, and. And this, I want to tell everybody too, reminds me, this is Artful Ribbon. Next week, I'm going to have my mom, Donna, join me for the Facebook Live. And she's going to share some really amazing ribbon flowers that she's made. So don't miss, if you enjoyed, I had Donna join me on the live event um, three weeks ago, I think. And we talked about quilts. So don't forget to join 
mark your calendar to be here next week too, all right? So that is one of the articles. And I wanted to show you also, this. these magazines are filled with inspiration for, for fashion. And here again, you can see a fashion not only for the hat, but also for a really interesting applique on this dress or the suit as they call it. And I have a couple more pages to share with you. Okay, check out this hat, this ensemble. What a, what a flower on that hat, right? And you know, hats were just huge. People wore hats all the time in, um, especially back in the 20s, 30s. Um, so you can see that was definitely a part of it. every almost every woman's wardrobe when you're going out. And so this explains to you that, you know, a lot of these issues have examples of millinery fashion and the school, the Women's Institute's, you know, coursework. One of the um, tracks that people could take was on learning hat making, which is millinery, millinery. So. Let's see. You've seen a lot of different things today. I hope you've learned something or you've been inspired to dig into your closet and maybe come up with some fabric to upcycle this month for Earth Month, right? And there's Emma. She said, hi, mom. Okay. Hi, Emma. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Excellent. So um, think of Mother's Day coming up too and making flowers for Mother's Day and bouquets and upcycling, even I think the most meaningful thing could be if you found a fabric that maybe was, um, you know, a family heirloom fabric or a family heirloom textile and you you upcycled it into something, you know, new that somebody that we can enjoy in our modern life. And if you want to learn more of those ideas, be sure that if you sign up for my newsletter at amyberkman.com, because that's where I'm going to update you on what I'm going to be doing on the live events. It's where you're going to see any new products that we create um, and videos that I'm working on, learn more about my membership program. There's so much creativity that we can um, explore together based on using these vintage textiles and notions and upcycling and bringing them into our modern life in new ways. Um, Sherry says, thanks for the new ideas. I'm known for my flower brooches. Well, fun, Sherry. You could share them. I'll give a plug for our Facebook Vintage Made Modern group. I'm I'm streaming onto both the page today and the group. But if you're in that group, it allows you to share what you make or what you're inspired by. So I'd love to sh see Sherry's brooches if she's willing to share her ideas with others in the group. It's a great, great way to be inspired and learn from each other and enjoy a, a really nice community of like-minded fabric enthusiasts. Um, so I will, and Kate says, great group. Thanks, Kate. It's it's fun to, to, to be able to connect um, at a higher level with people. And we can do that in when in those Facebook groups. So I'm going to close today with um, a giveaway. And I'm also going to show you quickly one of the flowers. Remember I said Donna was going to join me next week. And she is going to, this is one of the flowers that she made with, with the ribbon that we'll be talking about next week. So isn't that a beauty? This is a gorgeous silk ribbon rose. Um, so don't miss next week's live. That's the 16th. Um, and we'll be here at one central on Friday. And again, this is being streamed on Facebook I upload these later to YouTube. So if you are watching from YouTube, this is a replay. And I really appreciate a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And again, check out the um, my newsletter. Be sure to sign up and connect there. I also will be posting some flowers on Instagram. Went on a trip last week, 
wasn't here, but it was in Arizona and took some gorgeous pictures of flowers. So look for me posting those on my Instagram. And the Instagram is Amy Berkman Studio. So again, next week with Donna, this is the book that we'll be looking at and the ribbon flower book. She'll be telling you some of her tips and tricks for making some gorgeous silk ribbon flowers. And we need a winner, Michelle. I don't want to forget. I have a winner. Okay. Ready. I'm ready for the winner. Alicia Klemovich Schultz. Alicia Klemovich Schultz. You are the winner. Alicia, if you're out there, the way you will get your PDF. And so Alicia is winning the, the PDF download of the Fabric Flowers book. And she needs to email info at amyberrickman.com and or DM. or dm me direct messenger on or direct message on into in facebook and go ahead and uh just put winner tell me you're the winner and share your email so we have that and we can send you access to this book that's just filled with great ideas and if you didn't win today you can you can own it. Amazon, you can find it. You could go to a local quilt or fabric store or you can go to amyberrickman.com for the download. Um, so. Oh, did I say Arizona? Oh, yes, I did. Emma just my daughter just corrected me, you guys. I was in Palm Springs or Palm Desert where I took the pictures that I'm going to post on my Instagram studio, Amy Berkman studio page. Daughter knows best, right? Um, so thanks to everybody for watching. And again, one last look at my pretty flowers. Thanks to my friend Susie. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. And I hope you get to smell some flowers and enjoy the great outdoors this weekend. Take care.